Predator 2 came out in 1990 and is the sequel to Predator, obviously. The movie stars Danny Glover as an LAPD cop who starts investigating all these mysterious murders within specific crime gangs in Los Angeles, except he finds out that this is not gang-on-gang -gang violence. A bunch of these gangsters are being taken out and killed in very impossible ways for any regular gang to do it, but we as an audience know that it's the Predator. This is the second Predator that has appeared in the series, and this time he's in an urban jungle, not a jungle jungle. So like I said last week, I've never seen Predator 2. I've heard a lot about it. I heard that when it came out, it got very bad reviews, but since then it's kind of become a cult classic. I honestly didn't know what to expect because of all the things I've heard about it, and watching the movie, it plays out a lot like Ghostbusters 2, where it pretty much feels like they took the script of Predator, just made a few changes here and there, but overall the plot's pretty much the same, right down to certain scenarios playing exactly the same way. But I didn't think this was as bad as something like Alien 3 or Alien Resurrection, because there are actually a lot of things in Predator 2 that I admire the film for doing, and some things that it could have done but chose not to. For one, let's talk about Danny Glover. He's fine in this movie, he does a decent job with his role, but what I really like is that they don't try to one-up Arnold Schwarzenegger, because you had Arnold Schwarzenegger fight possibly the toughest opponent of his career, so how do you top that? And I feel like everyone working on this movie realized that you can't top it. Even if you get someone like Sylvester Stallone, he's not as tough as Arnold Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger was bigger in terms of the action star spectrum of the 80s than Stallone ever was. So I do appreciate that they decided to go a little more small scale. They tried to get someone who's more of an average guy and not somebody who's big and muscular and see how he stacks up against the Predator. And this is an interesting idea that unfortunately doesn't amount to much, because when you take a look at the first Predator, Dutch had to use a lot of his ingenuity to fight the Predator, and it wasn't all gun-ho. And with Danny Glover, he's not as tough as Arnold Schwarzenegger, so by default he has to use his ingenuity to try to fight the Predator, but we've already seen this with the last movie. And speaking of things that we've seen done before that actually hurts this movie, is that they do a lot of point of view shots from the Predator's perspective with the thermal vision, and yeah, it's cool still, but there's really no surprise, because when you watch the first Predator movie, it was the first one, I mean, it had that advantage, but we didn't see the Predator until near the end of the second act, so the whole time, we don't know what's watching our main characters. With this movie, the title screen is of the thermal vision. It's pretty much the Predator looking at downtown Los Angeles with the title Predator 2. And every time we cut to the thermal vision, it's like, well, there's no surprise. We know what the Predator is this time around. We know who's watching everyone, so there's no tension. And plus, when the Predator actually goes on a hunt, it hunts a bunch of criminals and drug dealers that we don't care about. I mean, for all we know, this Predator could end up being like Batman, where the cops are completely incapable of handling the crime that's going all over Los Angeles, which... This movie came out a year before I was born. I know about the LA riots, but was Los Angeles really this bad, or was this just completely exaggerated? Whatever the case, this Predator plays out more like Batman, where he's taking out a bunch of scumbags, and again, there's really no threat to be had because none of the main characters are in danger. So every one of the Predator's victims in this movie, well, maybe except for one, is just nothing but fodder. Like, we just want to see these guys get killed, and it can be glorious at points. There are a lot of really cool kills in this movie from the Predator, and we do get a little more of an explanation on the Predator's culture and basically how they function. Because if you know the Predator, you know that they won't attack anyone who is not a threat. Like, the Predator in this movie runs into a little kid who has a plastic toy gun. Yeah, he could easily have killed the kid because it's a gun, but he realizes that it's plastic and this kid actually poses no threat. So, so the Predator leaves and doesn't harm the kid at all. And also what I really like is the exception a Predator makes for somebody who could be a harm to them. Danny Glover's partner is attacked by the Predator after she tries to basically shoot it, and the Predator's about to kill her, but he realizes that she is pregnant. 
so he lets her go. So that's kind of cool and shows that the Predators have a real sense of honor when it comes to who they kill. So we do get a little more of an idea of how the Predators function and what their culture is pretty much. Not to an extreme degree, but just enough to where it's not a complete rehash of the first Predator movie, where we actually get to know a little more about the Predator, we get to see all its cool weapons. But again, a lot of the scenarios just seem like they were lifted from the first Predator. There's even one scene in this movie that's lifted straight out of Aliens, where a bunch of faceless goons are sent into a factory to try to take out the Predator that they've rigged to be cold. But rather than playing out like Aliens, where it's supposed to be tension-filled and put you on the edge of your seat, it plays out more like Jurassic World, where We've never seen these people before, so when they get killed off by the Predator, it doesn't mean anything, because at least with Aliens, you got to know all these people beforehand, before that big action scene where the Xenomorphs attack, and at that point, you're terrified. With this movie, the soldiers are even wearing masks to where you can't see them, so when somebody gets killed, you're like, huh, I wonder who that guy was. There are a few other things in this movie that I actually do like. One actor I really like in this movie is Bill Paxton. I mean, he's playing Bill Paxton, so there's not a whole lot to his character, but it's always nice to see him in the role. And I, I still can't believe he's not with us anymore. Has it really been last year since Bill Paxton passed away? That's sad. But getting back to Bill Paxton in this movie, I do like how they didn't try to make him act like his character from Aliens. Like, between his roles in The Terminator, Aliens, and Predator 2, he's actually more toned down. So that I do appreciate, and I also want to mention that Bill Paxton is one of two actors to be killed by The Terminator, The Alien, and The Predator. The second one I'll address in a couple of videos later. But that's a little neat bit of trivia, and Bill Paxton's always entertaining. And there is one last thing in this movie that I actually did find amusing. So throughout this movie, there are points where it tries to play out like Robocop, where it has to have some sort of social commentary, and we cut to this guy who's supposed to be a news anchor, but it's almost like if Alex Jones got hired by TMZ to just cover all of this crime going on, really get in the middle of danger. And there's one point in the movie where he is up in Danny Glover's face. He has a camera going in, asking him all these absurd questions. And Danny Glover just gives him a good old punch in the face, a knockout punch, and just says, fuck you. And that made me laugh because the whole time I was watching this character, I was like, this is like a less insane version of Alex Jones if he joined TMZ. That knockout punch gives me so much joy. But I wish that character was killed off by the Predator because he was so annoying. So... On the whole, this movie's just kind of meh. It's not as bad as I was led to believe, but it's just nothing all that memorable. Honestly, the most memorable part of the movie is when we go inside the Predator spaceship where we see all of his trophies. And one of those trophies is the Xenomorph skull, which that sparked everyone's imagination and anticipation for the idea of an Alien vs. Predator movie. So that's the only memorable thing that I took away from this movie, but outside of that, not much to say. I'd say watch at your own risk. It's not that bad. It's got some really good moments here and there. It's got some good ideas. And I like how the movie doesn't really try to top Predator, which might be a fault in the fact that this is a disappointing sequel, but I also think that it works to the film's advantage that they didn't try to top Arnold Schwarzenegger. So yeah, Predator 2 is what it is. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's just not that good either. And that's my review for Predator 2. Now, the next movie to feature the Predator is technically the two Alien vs. Predator movies, but I am not done reviewing the solo Predator movies, and I am still delaying the inevitable, because I am not quite ready to rewatch those two movies yet, especially Requiem. So, next week, we're gonna skip ahead to 2010's Predators, which I have seen once in the theater, so this is going to be an interesting rewatch because it seems like a lot of people have turned on this movie since it came out, but hey, we'll see what happens. So now I want to hear what you guys have to say. What did you think of Predator 2? Do you like it? Do you not like it too much? Do you think it's too similar to the first Predator? And also, do you think I'm smart for reviewing all the solo Predator movies before the AVP movies, or are you disappointed that I'm just delaying the inevitable? Let me know in the comments down below. And until next time, I hope you enjoyed this review. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and of course, leave a comment. Don't forget to support my Patreon page, follow me on social media. And until next time, this is The Real Mr. Robinson telling you there's only one.